Seamus Bruner investigates corruption for a living for the Government Accountability Institute, and he joins us now. Seamus, good to have you back on. Um, I, I want to start off with the same thing. Democrats claim you can't trust Jason Galanis' testimony, this guy that was in on the Chinese deals with the Bidens. You can't trust him because he's been arrested. He's a criminal. What's your response to that as, as somebody that investigates corruption? Yeah, I mean, Jason Galanis is in prison because of a deal brought to him by Hunter Biden's business associates. It was the tribal bond fraud where Devin Archer, Golanis, and several other Biden associates defrauded a Native American tribe. Now, Hunter Biden escaped justice on that deal. But uh, Jason Golanis, I mean, to be sure, he is a criminal. He's in jail. Uh, but he's got evidence, and he's had evidence for years. We see his name all over the Bevin Cooney emails, another Biden associate who went to prison. He was involved, right? I mean, he was the one drafting the pitch decks for a lot of these Biden business deals. So he knows what's going on. Now, Tony Bobulinski, he did not get involved in any of the crimes, but he, this Jason Galanis guy is kind of like Tony Bobulinski in the sense that he's got rare documents that prove Biden corruption. And so Devin Archer's another one, Rob Walker's another one. All of these guys have documents that corroborate each other. That's the key point on all of this is the investigators in Congress and the Oversight Committee, they're not lying. They're using real documents, corporate records, money trails, bank records. And these come from people like Jason Galanis. Yeah, NBC, I wanted to show this. Uh, you know, this is the headline. Ex-U.S. spies warned the Hunter Biden scandal had Russian fingerprints. They feel vindicated now. This goes back to the Smirnoff arrest. The spies who wanted to help Joe Biden win in 2020 by telling the country that the laptop was fake, which is what they were really doing, and they knew exactly what they were doing. Well, now NBC reporting they feel vindicated, even though the laptop was still real. Smirnoff changes none of that. The laptop is still real, and they work to help Biden conceal his corruption in 2020. What do you think of that headline? Yeah, you're exactly right, Rob. And these these 51 intelligence guys, first of all, the implication there is that the Biden laptop is fake. That's right. false. The FBI corroborated and confirmed using a number of different methods, uh, you know, cryptography type methods, uh, very highly technical stuff. The Daily Mail and sev several other outlets have done the same. There's all kinds of metadata that proves that this is 100 percent authentic. It does not have Russian fingerprints. So that's that's just kind of casting aspersions and trying to poison the well. Mm -hmm. But the second point on these intel guys is where were they when the Obama Biden administration uh, put and Hillary Clinton as secretary of state pushed the reset button with Russia and Joe Biden as vice president specifically. Now, this is in Leon Panetta, the former defense secretary's memoir. Joe Biden was the one who tried to sweep a Russian spy ring under the rug in 2010. And the Obama Biden administration continued to give deal after deal to Russia, including the Uranium One deal, by the way, which was a real problem, uh, all the way up through 2014. And then with this conflict with Ukraine, Hunter Biden gets on the take with the Ukrainian gas company. He's also milking both sides of the deal with uh, Russian oligarch Yelena yep. Baterina. And finally, they still haven't sanctioned Baterina. So I would challenge Congressman Goldman, if he's so concerned, to push for sanctions against Yelena Baterina. It's amazing. It is amazing. Seamus Bruner, we appreciate it. Good to see you. You too. Thanks, Rob.